Hello everyone, welcome back. We are here for the Victory Road Circuit Winter Series Grand Finals showcasing our top 16 uh, players of the circuit. My name is Ben Kiraku, joined here by David Partington. Welcome, David. Uh, we are in our third round of today of eight. Uh, so going to be jumping into the next match very soon. But first, a quick recap of what happened in the uh, last match. Uh, it was a very, very quick match. Very, very offensive. David, what did you think? I thought it was really interesting to see two Dragapult teams going up against each other, where which is a Pokemon I think has dropped off quite a bit. I think the rise of Zacian, as we see that naturally outspeeds it, Calyrex Shadow that outspeeds mm. it, and here we saw two of them, both rocking kind of this um, support slash offensive mode that they've both got with the offensive moves, Life Orb, but also we had a will o -Wisp in one, we had Surf on another to help the Colossal, which was really interesting. Yeah. But I think with um, the Gastrodon there made a, such a huge difference to the matchup for um, the Colossal matchup, so it was really interesting to see how that was working. It's, that's a Pokemon that we don't often see either, but it was a really close and quite interesting game. Certainly was. Yeah, you're absolutely right there with Gastrodon. Been one of those awkward Pokemon for a very long time in VGC and uh, did so much work in that game. Uh, but of course, now we are ready. We have players connected to each other. Uh, we're going to introduce you to uh, these players matching up is Giuseppe Alario on uh, one side of the field, whose perspective we will be seeing it from. Uh, he's got quite an interesting team. I'm quite looking forward to seeing that Reggie Drago doing some action. Um, but of course, some achievements as well. Uh, from recent times, we've got runner up in the Battle Dome 4, uh, so an online tournament there. And of course, two very, very good finishes in the uh, Victory Road circuits, uh, making another appearance in the Victory Road circuit, of course. Uh, in this event. So a uh, top 16 placement and a runner-up placement. Uh, it's no surprise to see him here with that sort of online pedigree into this top 16 event. Yeah, and a very strong team that we've got here as well. Very, very hyper offensive, as you were saying. Not a lot of trick room options, but I think probably a lot of ways to deny it. There's certainly a lot of ways to deny it. And of course, Eric Rios, no stranger to uh, really the top top uh, performing uh sorry i'll try and get my words out a little bit better he's a very top performing player in vgc and has been for a number of years uh 2020 and 2019 achievements that you can see there all in live events all at uh, very high levels and at very prestigious tournaments but of course his achievements go back much further than that c10 coming into this tournament is going to be sporting that zashian uh, as his restricted pokemon alongside some other quite offensive pokemon with the charizard venusaur and landorus also making an appearance in his team with a little bit of support coming from that torkoal and grimmsnarl yeah, and so much more similar team to what we've seen in previous matches today with the Zashian, we've got the Venus Sword on here, and that Grim Soul, which is so good at supporting a lot of uh, many different teams with their screens, potential Thunder Waves, and that reliable Spirit Break to hit those dark types that are quite common around in this format. But yeah, Eric Rios is no stranger to anybody who's playing VGC, and it'd be great to see both these players facing off. And here we are in Team Preview. Certainly. Uh, just a quick rundown of the teams, just in case you missed it from just a second ago. We have on Giuseppe's side of the field, uh, Kyogre, Tornadus, Vat, uh, Reggie Drago, Cinderace, uh, Sarina, and Regilecki. And of course, Eric sporting that Landris, Zashian, Torko, Grimmsnarl, Charizard, and Venusaur. Yeah, so as we were saying before, the hyper offensive type of Giuseppe's team is really interesting and Richie Drago is not something we've seen a lot of however with that Serena that might have the queenly majesty ability blocking those uh, priority attacks it, it's a, it enables it to go for those really powerful spread dragon energies that um, would otherwise get stopped by fake outs or potential prankster thunder waves which this Grimmsnarl might even have um, mm. and that pairs well quite nicely with a lot of the other team members as well so you've got the spread water spout on Kyogre and potential spread electro web on Reggie Lecky. like there's a lot of stuff that it helps out with and with the Sun team on the other side we've got potential sleep powder options that uh, Giuseppe's going to have to watch out for especially and now here are the leads 
It certainly is, and uh, that's Zashian and Grimmsnarl coming straight out onto the field for Eric, uh, and of course that Talonflame and Reggie Elecki. So uh, very fast lead there from Giuseppe. Uh, looks like it's going to be getting faster as well. It does. So Zashian obviously is very fast, but Reggie Elecki is, and with Talonflame on here as well, it offers the Tailwind option to make itself even faster. So Grimmsnarl is in a, in a right position to potentially setting up some screens here. Um, Thunder Waves as well into the Talonflame could be quite nice, but Giuseppe could have that Serena in the back, so it's not a particularly safe option for, to go for here, but Zashin might be a little bit worried here, um, especially if we have a fire move on this Talonflame. Um, Electro Webs might hit it too, but it does go for the Protect. It certainly does, not wanting to take any damage from anything on uh, Giuseppe's side of the field, and does look like it protects itself from an Electro Web coming out from that Regilecki, doing a quite a quite respectable damage to that Grimmsnarl with a critical hit, uh, dropping the speed of that Grimmsnarl. So uh, Zashian quite rightly protecting itself from that. Uh, Talonflame going for the taunt there. Uh, Grimmsnarl not going to be able to do all of its shenanigans, uh, but the only shenanigan that it wants to do is getting that Spirit Break onto the Regilecki, which does bring it below half HP and drops its special attack stat, which could be crucial. Yeah, I like that play from Eric. He's got went for the Spirit Break into the Regilecki, which is over half damage, and drops its special attack, reduces its damage output. But it also covers for the, if Regilecki had gone for the Dynamax, say, into the, the, the Zashin to try and knock it out in turn one. And so he protects it just in case. He also doesn't get the speed drop either. And now we've got um, Zashin in a safer position now that Regilecki is a, bit, a little bit neutered. But we go into turn two, and it's now it's switching out. Yeah, definitely that Zashin is something that Eric is really trying to protect. Uh, brings out the Torkoal in favor of it and brings that sun onto the field. So it uh, could be boosting up Talonflame here with its uh, potential fire-type moves. But uh, the... Uh, Regilecki just carrying on, hitting quite hard, especially at one, at one minus stage of special attack with that Electro Web, uh, dropping the speed, which won't make too much of an impact there. Uh, and of course, Grimmsnarl going again for that Spirit Break, uh, breaking Gale Wings on the Talonflame, dropping its special attack, which probably doesn't uh, make too much of a difference this turn. It uh, looks like a potential Will-O-Wisp came out into that Torkoal as well. Yeah, so Grimmsnarl's being quite a defensive option here, whittling away at things, breaking potential focus ashes, lowering damage output, breaking the Gale Wings on Talonflame, and still over half HP at the moment. And Torkoal, a great defensive switch in there as well, from the potential will o -Wisp, the speed drops from Electro Wave, it doesn't really care about. So Eric's positioning himself quite nicely. Um, however, we've got the Torkoal in a position that's still really slow, and Reggie is still quite powerful. Um, so we'll have to see if... Giuseppe has given a, a chance now to maybe switch in his Kyogre now that the sun is up. Yeah, indeed. But that Grimmsnarl uh, going to be wanting to leave the field. Uh, it's going to shake off that taunt while it's back with its trainer. Uh, Zashian coming in instead. So uh, maybe something that Eric's trying to do to just reposition himself, uh, use that Torkoal to remove the Regilecki from play. Uh, Regilecki's doing what it does best and just sitting there, uh, content to fire off Electrowebs, making sure that Torkoal uh, is the slowest thing on the field by a long way. And of course, dropping the speed of that Zashian, which could be... Uh, really quite crucial later. Taunt coming out from the Talonflame does look like it uh, stops the Torkoal from moving this turn, so potentially a Yawn or a will o -Wisp coming out there. Yeah, I think that was a Yawn coming from the Torkoal, which is a great thing to stop. Don't want your Pokemon getting drowsy, so you can do them in, you have to switch them out to stop the sleep. Um, but now Torkoal's still in a, in a nice position, maybe going for the Yawn to kind of catch the Kyogre on the switch in, but uh, Giuseppe doesn't give him that. Instead, he, but now the switch in comes. Yeah, that Kyogre kind of coming in, uh, going to take that uh, sunlight away and bring its own rain with the Drizzle ability um, and make that Torkoal not do any damage with any of its attacks. But Torkoal not opting to attack this turn, just switching back out into that Grimmsnarl. So good move there from uh, Eric to allow himself to bring the sun back in later. And just to protect from the... Uh, uh, the Zashian there, not wanting to take any damage or any will o -Wisp coming up, but Kyogre is going to be absolutely laughing now with that Tailwind set up from the Talonflame. Yeah, absolutely. Kyogre is in the, exactly in the position. Full health. It's got the Tailwind boost. It's got its Water Spouts ready to just fire off against both these Pokemon. Grimstar have a may still have those Prankster attacks, though, like Thunder Wave or Fake Out that it could still use. So Kyogre's not completely safe yet, unless there's that Sarina back. 
but we don't know if it is there yet. Um, or Kyogre could go safely for a Dynamax, for instance, and then just take a knockout, especially as that's actually protected the slot that is going to get hit by a lot of damage, regardless of what it's going to be. But the Kyogre's actually going to retreat. Yeah, there's uh, possibly trying to take a little bit of advantage of a passive turn from Eric. Uh, the Regilecki comes in in favor of the Kyogre, has reset that special attack drop that it took last turn, and crucially making sure that the he has the uh, Giuseppe has the ability to bring that brain up now that Torkoal comes into the sun. So brilliant switch there, and we'll see uh, the uh, Grimmsnarl there bringing the light screen into effect. And uh, we do see the Torkoal again switching in on a will wisp there. So great uh, defensive play by both players. Yeah, I like Giuseppe's play there. He goes for the will wisp just in case the Zashin stays in, as now the Tailwind's up and he can go for it before it attacks. But he also covers for the Torkoal switching as well and gets Iogre out so that he can still bring it in later to set his, get his weather back again, which is excellent. And the Grimstar was safe to get a light screen up there as well, which was a, a good play too. I'd be curious to see whether the Torkoal would have actually lived like a Max Geyser from that Kyogre with the light screen up <laughs> in the sun. Wouldn't be surprised if it didn't, but either way, another screen goes up. Indeed, the other screen coming up and just making sure that Eric has maximum protection from all of uh, Giuseppe's attacks. Uh, we see another Electro Web there coming out from the Regilecki. So again, uh, the speed not being too vital, but it's all chip damage that's building up and uh, could allow Giuseppe to have a really nice time uh, at the end of this game. Uh, another taunt comes out from Talonflame, but it looks like it's too a uh, little bit too late here. Uh, Brunusnell's done most of the big damage that it wanted to do uh, to from a defensive perspective with those screens already and a body press comes in from the Torkoal to finish off that Regilecki so uh, no more speed drops coming out from Electro Web. No absolutely and now Yusuke's gonna, gonna think what he's gonna bring in this time he knows we, we know we got the Kyogre in the but we still don't know whether it's that Serena that Cinderace or the Reggie Drago that's still left and if you bring Dudspring in his Kyogre now he does get the weather con which is uh, obviously quite good for him, and he does bring it in this time. However, I think uh, he's still wary of what could come out from Eric's side, but now with that taunt on that Grimmsnarl, there's no Thunder Wave that could come out either, so it's a very safe position now for Giuseppe to go for that big water spout and just yeah. get two knockouts at this point. But we just don't know what Eric has in the back. I'm guessing maybe the Venusaur, because surely with a Kyogre team, maybe you want to bring... And in which case, you still do kind of want that sun and... Even as a switch in for Venusaur, it's going to take a lot of damage on the switch in, but hopefully that light screen is going to help out a bit more versus that Grimstar. But I can't imagine going for Yosepi going for anything else but a huge water attack. Yeah, a huge water attack does look very likely. Uh, that Torkoal is not going to be knocked out this turn from uh, any sort of uh, water attack. It uh, looks like the Talon Flame attacked into that burst, uh, and we are seeing a water spout coming in. Uh, probably going to be enough to knock out the Grim Snarl, I think, uh, hmm. as it goes down and goes back to his trainer. Uh, so one uh, problem from Eric uh, for Giuseppe on Eric's side of the field has been dealt with now. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to be seeing the Venusaur coming in. You are absolutely correct there. Uh, so a little bit of an awkward position there. Uh, we've got the potential for Tailwind coming out on the Talonflame, and that Kyogre uh, with a max Hailstorm could be very much threatening the Venusaur. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, well, with the rain up now, Talon the speed advantage this turn, so it's able to get on. So it doesn't even matter if it's slower than this Venusaur. It's to get a Tailwind go for another big attack, whatever it's going to be. And we've still not seen Dynamax from either of these t players either, which is still really interesting. Uh, I can imagine the Venusaur going for it at some point, though, just to get that massive amount of bulk so it can take a potential Ice-type attack from Kyogre. Which we don't actually know if it has or not, but a Dynamax is now coming out, and we're about to see who that is. Yeah, probably going to be that Venusaur uh, going into his Dynamax form, as you said. Uh, going to be wanting to take those... Uh, potential ice type moves and flying type moves uh, that it's being threatened by on Giuseppe's side of the field uh, and reply back with a big G Max Vine Lash. Uh, but we do see that Tailwind coming out, as you mentioned there, David. Uh, it doesn't matter about the speed interactions uh, because of uh, the sun, rain being up rather than the sun. And there is that G Max Vine Lash. Uh, importantly, after the water spout, so water spout did do. Lots and lots of damage to Zashian, uh, but it doesn't actually pick up the KO onto the Kyogre, but that residual damage from G-Max Vine Lash is looking like it's enough. Yes, it is enough to pick up 
the knockout on Kyoga. So Eric is going to have won the speed war now. Uh, the weather war, sorry, which also means he's won the speed war potentially. Yeah, I think he has. And now with that GMAX Vine Lash that's on the field, it's going to chipping away at these Pokemon even more now. Cinderace is the last Pokemon Dynamax point and you also have the speed advantage here too so if it's got that bounce for the max airstream it could be doing a lot of damage to venusaur it'll get it to a point where it can also outspeed the zashian as well and the good thing is if if the zashian goes f first necessarily it can um only hit the fire types in the race and so behemoth blade isn't as effective however with the t tailwind up just yuseppe's got to be aware of what type he's going to become before he attacks because if Eric calls whatever type it's going to be, then it's going to do a lot of damage depending on what it's going to what it's going to turn into. But here is the Gigantamax Cinderace coming out right now. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's got the biggest ball in the playground uh, and it's going to be using it, I think, in this turn. Uh, so going to be launching out some big damage, but not before Talonflame uh, goes for that Brave Bird. Uh, going to pick up the knockout on Zashian, so great knockout there before the Zashian is able to move, and maybe an indication on how Eric has trained that Pokemon. Uh, uh, Cinderace is going for an attack now. Uh, unfortunately, can't read which one it's going to be going for, but it is that Max Steel Spike uh, going into the Venusaur, so maybe fearing something like a Cobra Berry or a Weakness Policy. Uh, not wanting to do super effective damage, just content to, uh, let's say, chip away at it before it's in range of another attack. But Venusaur getting that max ooze off onto the Talonflame, picking up the knockout there, but more crucially raising its special attack. So in this Cinderace versus uh, Venusaur matchup here, uh, it's going to be Venusaur that's applying the most offensive pressure and not going to be taking too much damage from any of Cinderace's attacks in the rain. Yeah, exactly. That increased special attack is going to be huge, especially for dealing with a Dynamax Pokemon like Cinderace. And the Torkoal coming in now is pretty big too, because there's been no speed boost from the Cinderace at the moment from a potential airstream. So this Venusaur should now be able to outspeed if the Tailwind is still up or not. And with, but Cinderace is now Steel type, which is a nice type to be versus a Venusaur it, um, with its poison and grass moves. But but Torkoal not so much. So. It'd be interesting to see how the Cinderace plays its plays uh, its moves. But I'd say it would probably go for a fire move because then you can also take the fire moves better from a Torkoal, and you should probably be able to get the knockout on this Venusaur too, assuming you outspeed. But mm -hmm. equally, Venusaur could just go for the Max Guard. Torkoal could go for a Yawn as well, which could change the tide of this because it's still not over despite this close game with not many Pokemon left. It's certainly, and uh, I think there's the last turn of. Uh, tailwind left as we see the Cinderace uh, starting to move now, going for that max airstream. He's going to be going into the Torkoal and uh, not into the Venusaur, and the Venusaur did not max guard. Uh, so I think you can see there, Giuseppe's reaction uh, wanted to see that Venusaur going for a max guard, but instead we're going to see a G-Max Fine Lash. Uh, not going to be too effective, obviously, with uh, Cinderace being a flying type now. Uh, and of course, because Torkoal survives, it is going for that yawn. And it is going to mean that the Cinderace is going to be having a nap next turn. Uh, so Venusaur at the end of its Dynamax, um, but it looks like it is going to be going before the Cinderace this turn. It does. And that could be pretty huge if it's got a sleep powder up its sleeve, because then it's going to be able to get a... If it hit, well, let's say if it hits, that is because sleep powder is sleep powder, and that, and then we could see a sleeping match going on. But Cinderace is surely in a position to potentially take a knockout. I mean, even if this Venusaur has say misses sleep powder, it, it's definitely getting knocked out. If it goes for protect, it may still even go down to a, a max move from this very powerful Cinderace. And there's the A stream and takes the knockout. It does, and an interaction that we uh, missed from last turn that Cinderace uh, did use the max air stream uh, to raise its speed. So. Uh, even in sunlight with the chlorophyll boost, Venusaur doesn't, doesn't outspeed anymore, but uh, unfortunately retained its flying type, even though it got the knockout on Cinderace and, I'm oh, sorry, on, on Venusaur, uh, and therefore won't be resisting for the remainder of its sleeping turns any of the attacks that Torkoal is going to be dishing out uh, with that sun boosted heat wave uh, that did fairly respectable damage. Yeah, I think Giuseppe played that turn pretty well. He he got the knockout he wanted, and he changed to flying type to resist the body press coming out from that Torkoal. But 
However, he couldn't stop the sleep that's now occurring, and he's guaranteed to be asleep this turn as well. And so this talker, all it needs to do is hit a fire move or go for a couple of body presses to just get this knockout and the win. And there's the yeah, burning jealousy. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, knockout there on Cinderace. So one game to Eric Rios um, and a very, very tight game. Uh, could have gone either way, really, depending on uh, how we saw the protects happening, uh, what happened with the uh, residual damage from GMAX Vine Lash, of course, uh, but also the move choice there at the end with Torkoal going for that yawn at just the right time to make sure that it was able to pick up the knockout with that burning jealousy. So uh, great play from both players, uh, but Eric just managed to edge it out there um, with all of his defensive play culminating in a winning position. Exactly. An excellent match by both players, to be honest. And we'll be able to see what adjustments both these players make going into next round. Because I think for Eric, the Grimstar was pretty big getting off those screens to just slow the damage output of this very hyper offensive team that Yusepi has here. And even though the Cinderace did a lot of work in the late game, Yusepi, I think it was a little bit too late as it, the Yorm was able to slow it down a little bit too much, even though it was able to get some big damage off completely. And I think there were a couple of moments as well where Seppi could have got a bit more offense off, um, like a, an earlier attack from this Kyoga. And I think it, when the Zashin then switched out, for instance, into the Torkoal, I think even if the Kyoga just went for like a Max Geyser into that slot, that Torkoal was probably going down, especially with the the, wa the Wave Incense that's boosting its um, damage output, most likely. Mm -hmm. So, And that would have just got rid of Eric's position positioning ability because he's got one less Pokemon and his ability to change the weather. So I think if you simply makes maybe could probably do the same plan with the same Pokemon, to be honest, um, maybe pocket this arena in the back um, to deal with a potential prankster, but there's not a lot it can hit here. But, mm. and for Eric's end, I think going for the sun mode plus this, the, the standard Zashian to just apply that behemoth blade pressure is still a very strong option. I, but I think even with the same Pokemon, we could see still a very different game. A uh, very different game indeed, and uh, we are seeing the same game, uh, certainly from Eric's side of the field, uh, leading off with that Zashian and the uh, Grimmsnarl, and of course the same leads as game one, the Talonflame and Regilecki coming out from Giuseppe. Yeah, same leads. So, uh, as we were saying, they even with the same leads, there's still so much different things that could happen this turn. So, Grimstar went for a Spirit Break last time. It could still easily get some screens up this turn. And But no, there's the Thunder Wave this time. <laughs> yeah, packing that Thunder Wave uh, that it never even tried to use in Game 1. Uh, going to be slowing down that Talonflame, which is vital. Uh, that Zashian is going to be able to launch off an attack before any form of Will-O-Wisp comes out if it's even able to do so. Uh, Electro Web coming out from the Regilecki and doing a fairly respectable damage, dropping speed, of course. Uh, but Behemoth Blade coming out from the Zashian. Wow. That's, I just can't get my head around how much damage uh, that Zashian <laughs> does with that stuff like Behemoth Blade. It's just, it's just nuts. Uh, doing nearly, uh, nearly getting a knockout. Uh, of course, Dawn coming on to the Grim Snarl, so no more shenanigans, but it feels like the damage has already been done. Yeah, this Peregrine Falcon is uh, fast, but it is not very bulky, uh, not compared to Zashin, which has a monstrous attack and even that attack boost too. So, yeah, I like that play from Eric. He slows down the Talonflame, gives it a chance to miss a turn as well, and gets a huge amount of damage on it that anything can just pick it up now which is really good. I think because if as soon as the, both these players start taking knockouts, that reduces how much each of these players can switch around, which is going to really help the weather war in the, the end game. So Grimstar could even, um, even though it's taunted now, it's not going to be able to get some any screens up this time, but it could still spirit break and that can take a knockout on Townflame and severely weaken Reggie Leckie's um, offensive pressure. But talking about offensive pressure, I think it's just increased. Yeah, there's a lot of effective pressure coming from that Regilecki now that it's gone into its Dynamax form. Uh, boosted by the Transistor ability, is going to be launching some really powerful attacks and no defensive play there from Eric, which is a little bit unusual to see. And that Zashian is getting knocked out in one. Uh, so fantastic play there from Giuseppe, really changing up his game plan uh, to uh, suit uh, a game two and maybe taking a couple more risks. Uh, Talonflame going for that Will-O-Wisp onto the Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl is both taunted and has been uh, burned. So 
that uh, Spirit Break that's just come out onto the Reggie Lecky isn't going to be doing too much damage. And of course, the Electric Terrain is new, uh, nullifying the special attack drop from Spirit Break. Yeah, it looks like an amazing turn for Yusepi here. He gets a knockout on Eric's Restricted. He burns a physical type attacker with his Will-O-Wisp. But now Eric does get in Venusaur quite safely. And if he does have Torkoal in the back and Venusaur's got enough speed investment, it should be able to outspeed this Regilek in. If it's got that Max Quake, it might even be able to take a one-hit knockout, as Regilek is not very bulky. Um, however, Talonflame does um, have the Tailwind option up its sleeve, but because the Gale Winds is broken, it's not going to get the priority behind it. So it's definitely in Eric's corner here. But definitely Max Lightning. Is in Max Lightning coming out here. Uh, not going to be able to enough to to be able to take out that grim smell. Wow, uh, that special attack drop doing so much work here. Uh, Sludge bomb coming out from the Venusaur is going to be enough to knock out that Talon Flame, of course. Uh, and the uh, Spirit Breaks coming out from the grim smell, further dropping the special attack of the Regilecki. Uh, grim smell does it survive? No, it does not. Eric is losing his grim smell this turn. So uh, we're almost coming in clutch for reasons that are slightly different to normal. Um, but the trouble is that gasefi has got that Regilecki on the field. While it's in, uh, even though it's in electric terrain, it's going to be doing a lot less damage than normal. And of course, Torkoal coming onto the field for Eric with that Venusaur is going to be boosting up the speed and putting on a lot of offensive pressure. It is. So Eric's actually just down to his last two Pokemon at this point, but it is Venusaur and Torkoal, and that says it all, really. They're both on full <laughs> HP. Venusaur's got a lot of speed investment now. And even if the Kyogre switches in, it's not a safe switch in with this Venusaur having the potential to Dynamax and go for a, a massive G-Max Vine Lash. So mm. it, depending on where that slot is. So Yuseppi's still um, got another turn of Dynamax, but with minus two special attack Regilecki, it's not going to be doing a huge amount. It's likely only got electric type attacks. So, and Torkoal could be quite defensive here and be able to take it fairly well. However, the Venusaur is, it's definitely up to Venusaur what it does at this point. Electric Terrain is up, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a Dynamax. And yeah, here comes a switch out from the Regilecki. Yeah, I like that play a lot from Giuseppe, uh, saying that the Regilecki is really not doing enough uh, work on the field now. And even though I've got one more turn of Dynamax, it's actually better to bring that Kyogre in, change the weather, and make sure that that Torkoal is both not doing as much damage, but more importantly, is dropping the speed of that Venusaur to make sure that Cinderace uh, on uh, Gasefi's side of the field is going to be going first. And uh, that Venusaur going for its Gigantamax, going uh, to be probably trying to catch the Venus uh, Kyogre on the switch in with a G Max Vine Lash, uh, but no Dynamax from the Cinderace, instead going straight for a bounce. Is that? Yeah, I think that's a bounce. I wonder with Yuseppi's reaction there, whether he timed out maybe and went tried to airstream, or maybe he tried to predict a max guard there and and, and it didn't um, get off there. But there's the Venusaur going for the big max quake into the Regilecki, which would have knocked it out most likely, but instead the Kyogre yeah. takes it instead, which takes it quite nicely to be fair, but it, a safe max move nonetheless, because it does now get a special defense boost, which helps it out. Um, no end against the Kyogre again and the Regilecki in the back. And now Yosepi's down to um, three Pokemon, but he does not have his Dynamax this time. And Venusaur can still boost its special defenses and he knows where Cinderace is going to be next turn. Certainly does. And uh, that Torkoal going for the Protect now doesn't want to take any damage. Uh, we see the bounce coming in. Wow. A uh, critical hit there does so much damage and gets oh. the paralysis. Oh my god, I was just about to say if that Venusaur was trained to be a bit faster than the Kyogre, maybe it manages to get a G-Max Vine Lash off, but not this time. The Paralysis will instantly drop the speed, uh, but it looks like Kyogre's going for a Water Attack. Uh, looks like a uh, Origin Pulse, potentially. Um, oh, coming out from there, but uh, the Venusaur does survive and launches out a big max ooze uh, onto cinderace does pick up the mm. knockout that's very crucial to see uh, but not the knockout on that kyogre which i think uh, eric would have preferred on this turn um and it is now down to two pokemon to two yeah that's really unfortunate crit for eric i think there because um 
Otherwise, I think the Vinsel will be able to take another hit from this Kyogre, because I don't think it has an ice move. Uh, I think it's got a couple of water attacks and maybe an electric type attack, and now this Vinsel is in range of anything. And without that crit, I think he would have had a, a lot more health to lift these hits. Um, but it, it, even so, if, I think if the G-Max Vanash had maybe gone into the Kyogre there, uh, Eric might still have been in this at this point, because he'd have been able to get the knockout most likely, and then Torko could start playing the Yawn games again with whatever was in the back. But... Uh, yeah, I think now Eric has gone for the forfeit. Uh, yeah, looks that way. Uh, it was a forfeit, so uh, victory coming to Gasepo. We're going to be going into a game three here. Uh, fantastic play. I, I love this uh, sort of interaction where you get these players, they uh, have a close game one, uh, then they're a little bit more aggressive. They've felt out how their opponent wants to play the game and they adjust their strategies to suit. And that really worked for Giuseppe here, going for those big max moves from the Reggie Lecky early doors and stopping that Zashian from doing too much work. Yeah, it was excellent play from straight out the, out the gate, like using the tools he had, the natural speed, the natural damage mm -hmm. output before the Grimstar was able to get up screens, before it was able to get up spirit breaks to like reduce the damage output. It was a, it was a nice play to just kind of go out of the gate and use uh, the offense he had. But now going into this match, I think um, Eric kind of, I think if he plays the same way, I think even if Zashin going down there, like he was still in quite a commanding position to potentially take it. I think it would have depended a lot on how much damage his Venusaur was able to do. I think it was interesting mm -hmm. to see the weakness policy actually proc on that Venusaur right at the end there, which was a, which meant it was able to, to completely obliterate the Cinderace with that max ooze and get another special attack boost. So it was just going to take knockouts after knockouts in the end. Um, yeah. But now... I wouldn't be surprised to see the same leads yet again because I think both these players have got a solid game plan. It's just, it's just how you play uh, the rest of the game is definitely the, the question I want to see. Yeah, certainly up for grabs. And I think um, Eric switching up the leads here is something that I'm quite surprised to see. Uh, Grimson and Venusaur coming out with Torkoal, uh, sorry, uh, not Torkoal, uh, Talonflame uh, and Reggie Lecky on the field for Giuseppe. Uh, and Eric, known as a player that knows how he wants to play and plays fairly similarly each game but now mixing it up a little bit and trying to get that instant pressure with venusaur right off the bat yeah i like it and although leading venusaur does leave it open to being hit by a big flying type attack from talonflame and it doesn't have the code barrier it's got a weakness policy so it's going to take a lot of damage but at the same time if grimstar can say get a reflect up at this turn and then venusaur goes for mm. the max and starts mm. going for damage even with that flying type attack it's going to get a boost in its damage and do a lot of damage back it as well. But I think the Talonflame ha might have a Focus Sash here as well, so it is going to be able to take an attack, whatever that attack is. Uh, Reggie Lecky not doing so much at this point, but uh, yeah, here comes one of those nice screens. Yeah, light screen coming up on Eric's side of the field. Uh, and of course, we see, is that Ooh. a Eerie Impulse? Yeah, I think so. Uh, coming up from the Reggie Lecky, going to be dropping the special attack by two stages. Uh, for that Venusaur, so making it a lot less of a threat as Taunt does come out from that Talonflame. And we see a Sludge Bomb coming into the Regilecki, still going to do quite a bit of damage. Um, so, quite good turn there for uh, Eric, of course, being able to get some damage onto the field and make sure he's not going to be taking too much damage and also uh, getting that light screen up. Absolutely. And interesting to see absolutely no Dynamax or switch out from that Venusaur there, like leaving it completely open to get hit by a flying type attack from Talonflame. But I think Eric's maybe thinking, uh, Yusef, he's not going to go for that immediately and just activate the weakness policy without, mm. Anything, mm. Uh, without anything to do. So I think I would quite like that play. And he gets away with actually no damage this turn. Certainly does, but uh, there's going to be damage this turn, and Venusaur is going to be taking a big brave bird. Going to be activating the weakness policy on that Venusaur, so uh, bringing it back up to uh, neutral special attack. Uh, Talonflame going to be taking a little bit of recoil and not having the benefit of that Gale Wings anymore for later in the game. Uh, if that Venusaur gets sunlight up onto the field, Electroid coming out, dropping the speed of both the Grim Snarl and the Venusaur. Again, not going to make too much of a difference, but he's going to be chipping away at both of Eric's Pokemon. And Sludge Bomb comes up to finish off that Talonflame. So a little bit of a trade in damage there, but Venusaur does actually pick up the knockout. Ooh. A Spirit Break gets a critical <laughs> hit, does pick up the knockout on that Regilecki. So uh, no special attack drops, but I think uh, Giuseppe would have probably preferred the special attack drop to the uh, knockout that turn. 
Yeah, I think so. Because Rage Lecky could have been on the field getting more speed drops, more electric type attacks, just pick up some knockouts. But Yosepe is actually down to his last two Pokemon. Albeit, it is Cinderace and Kyogre, which are both pretty nice options. But it's interesting that Eric hasn't been Gigantamaxing his Venusaur recently. And I think it might be because he might have Charizard or Landorus in the back as he wants a different Dynamax option potentially and so hasn't been mm. going for it so and but surely you bring the talk off for the rain matchup so maybe even no Zash in this time but either way Venusaur getting that knockout on Talonflame is really nice and I don't think he'd even got a uh, a tailwind off so it's looking quite nice this Eric does have one of those faster Pokemon in the back which he likely does and he's able to go for a last ditch attack at this point um, but Giuseppe still is in a nice position. He has the access mm. to a max airstream on his Cinderace, which gives his Pokemon the speed advantage, going into a quite passive, like, two Pokemon for, on Eric's end at the moment. Giving a Kyogre a speed boost as well with water spout potential is a l very scary to go against too. Very scary indeed, and Grimmsnarl doesn't want to be around to see that uh, particular move come out onto the field. Uh, Torkoal's going to come in, try and reduce the damage of the water-type attacks on uh, Kyogre, uh, from Kyogre, should I say, uh, and make sure that, that uh, his side of the field is a little bit safer for the following turns. Uh, we are finally seeing a Dynamax coming out here, uh, probably going to be uh, that uh, Cinderace coming out. Uh, going to be wanting to launch out something like a Max Airstream that we've seen already before. Uh, could be quite helpful for the Kyogre, as you mentioned earlier, David, um, and still doing quite a bit of damage to that Venusaur. But Venusaur is going to be boosted up in its speed, so he's going to be going to attack before the uh, Cinderace. Oh, no, sorry, Electro Web. Electro Web happened before. So uh, protect from the Kyogre, mm. but not going to have anything to protect from as the uh, Max Airstream does finish off the Venusaur, so uh, both Pokemon on Gazeppi's side of the field have got a stage of increased speed, uh, and that's definitely definitely where you want to be uh, going into the last turns with Eric only ha now having three Pokemon that he has access to, but uh, that Grimmsnarl coming in is going to be able to threaten with something like a Thunder Wave that we saw in Game 2, uh, and maybe bring these uh, the Cinderace and Kyogre back into check. It sure is. Uh, interesting uh, turn there, because I think Yuseppe may have forgotten potentially about the speed drop on the Venusaur, because he goes for the Protect on Kyogre, even though uh, I think he was probably guaranteed to be at speed, as you said, from the previous Electro Whip. Uh, drop there so he, he does miss a chance to get a potential KO and now this Grimstar's got a Thunder Wave off it has and uh, yeah that, um, that means that the Kyogre is going to be going first he's going to be launching out a water spout into uh, that side of the field but of course with the sun in play and the light screen uh, it doesn't do as much damage as Giuseppe would want to do uh, to that Grimstar that switched in uh, we do see a Max Darkness though coming out onto the field and that's going to be quite crucial it's going to do a little bit of chip damage through the protect on that Torkoal uh, but most crucially is going to be dropping the special defense of Eric's side of the field and uh, a sustained max darkness with a follow-up from uh, Water Spout is still going to be doing respectable damage. Sure is so uh, with the Torkoal switch in earlier I think um, Eric was nice to try to reduce Kyogre's damage just from the get-go because he knows he can't switch out Kyogre due to the last two Pokemon. But yeah, I like that Max Darkness because even if it's um, this Torkoal protects as it did, Kyogre still gets to do more damage in the next turn. But I imagine Grimmsnarl is just able to go for yet another Thunder Wave next turn. Mm -hmm. Lower this Kyogre's speed yet again, just despite the Airstream boosts and maybe even make it miss a turn at this point. The Cinderace is going into its last turn of Dynamax at this point and it's got one airstream boost and it's, a, it's it's also paralyzed but it, if it goes to another airstream it could be back to where it was before and that's still quite threatening especially if a charizard or a landorus are in the back rather than the sashian but eric finally goes for his dynamax of the game uh, yeah indeed and it's gonna be that torkoal would mm. love to see it uh torkoal go big or go home uh, is is the saying i like to say when it's torkoal on the field um and uh, that's going to be going for uh, possibly some uh, Max Knuckles uh, or uh, Max Flares, but uh, before that, we're going to get the Paralysis that you mentioned there, David, onto the Kyogre. Another Max Darkness coming out, so two Max Darknesses are going to be in play before the Kyogre gets to move, if it gets to move at all, uh, and now it will be the last Pokémon on the uh, on the field going to be launching out an attack. 
but it's not. Oh, you can see Giuseppe's reaction. He is not happy about that. The Kyogre does indeed miss out on its big water attacks. Uh, and of course, the Torkoal launches off a Big Max Flare into the uh, Cinderace. Doesn't do as much damage as you'd probably like. Torkoal, not the most offensive Pokemon out there, but absolutely respectable in this position. And definitely the way that Eric's going to have to claw his way back into the match. Absolutely. Finally, the paralysis kind of coming in clutch there for Eric and getting a huge one on, at that on a Kyogre that's on full health and was likely water spouting this turn. I don't know if it would have knocked out Torkoal. I would say it probably would have, uh, based on the minus two special defense and the, the wave incense as well on the Kyogre. And maybe even this Grimsar as well, depending with the special defense decreases too. Although the light screen was up as well, I'd love to do that count later. But uh, <laughs> Sidere still has a speed boost here and is still probably going to outspeed as well. So it's still not over for Yuseppe. He has the speed advantage, assuming he doesn't get paralyzed. Indeed, and uh, that's the screen going right back up again uh, for Eric. Um, and it's going to be a... Uh, let's see what move that is. I can't quite see. Uh, that's going to be an Iron Head coming out from the uh, Cinderace. He's going to get a critical hit knockout on the Grimmsnarl. And, uh, that looked like a Reflect that came up earlier. So that critical hit could have mattered there. Uh, Kyogre, though, finishing off with a single target Water Spout. Going to be able to knock out that Torkoal. Uh, so a bit of a shame there for Torkoal. Uh, it, it tried so hard, bless it. It, it, it went into Dynamax form. It wanted to join all the big boys on the field. Unfortunately, did get knocked out for its troubles. And Eric brings in his own Zashian, uh, which is probably going to outspeed the Kyogre and the Cinderace with that paralysis effect in play. It is. So it's interesting to see uh, Zashian is the last one, because even though it's probably going to be outspeeding everything, it, Kyogre, at the end of the day, resists steel. So <laughs> Zashian is going to have to go for its uh, sacred swords or something to be able to do damage to it. And if it's a two-hit KO, I think this is it's looking pretty good for Eric. But if it's not, it could look quite dicey. He might need to rely on some paralyses to get the win at this point, because he can only target one slot at a time, and both Kyogre and Citrace can do a lot of damage, and Sun is also running out. Yeah, Sun indeed is running out, but uh, unfortunately, it looked like a potential sucker punch there coming off, and the Cinderace not able to move because of the paralysis, paralysis and that Behemoth played into the Cinderace is definitely going to be enough to pick up the knockout there uh, so it is Zashian versus the Kyogre now um, and the Kyogre does get a big single target water spout off but really not doing too much damage there actually uh, quite a small amount of damage but the sunlight is indeed ending now so uh, that water spout's going to now be doing quite a bit more um, or the Origin Pulse that uh, Kasepe has access to uh, after taking a bit of damage from uh, Behemoth Blade would probably be his move of choice. Exactly. And now it's down to, first of all, does this Kyogre um, live two hits from Zashian? Mm -hmm. Is it going to get paralyzed? Well, here's the Beh Behemoth Blade. Let's see how much it does. Yeah, Behemoth Blade going into that Kyogre. Oh, it's just enough. It's going to be picking up the two-hit knockout. Uh, so let's see if the Origin Pulse connects. It does indeed connect. How much damage is it going to do? Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? No! The Zashian is going to be able to survive. A uh, very clear two-hit KO uh, coming out from that Zashian's Behemoth Blade onto the Kyogre. So it looks like it's going to be game to Eric. Yeah, I think it is. A really tight finish at the end there. Origin Pulse could have created, could have, oh, so many things could have happened there. And I think Eric's so calm and collected as well throughout that whole entire set. And then, like, we've seen, like, no reaction from the crits or whatever. And then right at the end, we just see the... Yes, so, like, he, he knows he's done it. So, uh, congratulations to Eric. And he's done excellently um, to, like, bring that back. But what... Not to take anything away from Giuseppe as well. The team was excellent, and he had so a lot of options to him. And even though he got mm. some paralyses, he got a bit unlucky as well. Um, he still could have easily kind of taken that game, I think, as well. Uh, I think a, a, a big one as well was when he went for the bounce with the Cinderace instead yep. of going for the like, Max Airstream, because I think even then the Venusaur didn't even target the Cinderace at all. So that was a turn that could have gone so well, but also, as it, we saw, it didn't go that well. Um, Indeed, and that's uh, that's a little bit of the game we play. Uh, you have to play the, the best move that you can see at the time. Um, and 
when you're playing up with these top players, it's always up for grabs. Um, and we saw that interaction between game one, game two, and game three being totally different games, even though we started in you know, roughly similar places in all three, um, with at least three Pokemon being the same uh, on turn one of each of the games. And um, so, yeah, congrats to both players. Uh, congrats to Eric for making it to top eight, which we'll be showcasing tomorrow. Uh, commiserations to Giuseppe, but let's not take away the journey that he's gone on to be able to make it to this top 16 position. Um, and he's certainly going to be taking away a little bit of prize money as well. So, uh, yeah, great play to both players. Good games. Uh, we're going to be taking a short break now, but coming back in just a moment with the next top 16 round uh, between uh, two fantastic players. Yeah. 